22. Uh, 33 days, day 22. That's gotta uh, be. 33. That's gotta be a good omen. Yeah. Um, with this guy, yeah. Raphael, and Coda, who's kind of cool. here and not here. <laughs> um, <laughs> So I wanted Raphael to come back on and, and talk with us. Um, there's so many things we could talk about, mm -hmm. um, but there's a lot happening mm -hmm. in the moment in disclosure. And rather than get into a whole bunch of content about what's happening mm -hmm. on a 3D level and with, with the government um, and ongoing star beam disclosure, I thought we would talk more about how you and parts of you may be feeling about it and some of the emotional mm -hmm. impact of, of all of this. So um, we could start there if you want. Yeah. Whatever you feel to say. Well, we're in a time where our science fiction is coming to be nonfiction. And uh, things that we've imagined, and so we're yeah. on this cusp of those of us that have, are aware of it are like kids in a candy store with excitement and thinking of what, how our world could change externally, and how much freedom could come into our world mm -hmm. with things like free energy and and the domination of of the powers that be to no longer have their place of. Power. And so there's, there's this external sense of salvation. Yeah. And the external is going to change and I'm going to come free. Right. And, um, and so it will be a change for all of us. But I'm feeling, I'm imagining that there's also this big potential for all this change to occur. And we're just feeling like satiated kids in the candy store now. And we've normalized. We've come into a new normal that's admittedly a whole lot better and a whole lot less suppression, but still something bedrock hasn't been felt or changed mm -hmm. right. in internally. Yeah, I think that's the, um, that's the big piece is mm -hmm. looking to the outside to shift, for something to shift in lifestyle and mm -hmm. society. Mm -hmm because the inner society or inner lifestyle yeah. um, between one part to the other is in a kind of turmoil yeah. or chaos or just flat, mm -hmm. flatness or yeah. deadness. Right. I'm reminded in the moment of a couple of decades ago, I had this inner subconscious m mantra going, if you will, um, kind of like a sentence that said, life will be better when and I just mm. need to get ahead. And I often applied it to finances and money that I just could, you know, I, I self-created treadmill that wasn't that conscious to me though. But boy, will it ever be better when? So I'll just stay busy on the treadmill to get to that day. And I think there's a similar way that we can relate to the to disclosure that is happening now, it's like, oh, we're just about going to get the jackpot at the end of the rainbow. Mm -hmm. And there will be profound changes. That's um, indisputable. But how we relate to them determines what they will actually be to you. Uh, just to complete the analogy there, life will be better when, and I was working 14, 16 hours a day. I've mm -hmm. come into a lifestyle in the last few years <laughs> where the next appointment on my calendar is something that I really you know need to show you up for. You have to wash the dog today, but that's it. <laughs> yeah, is uh, you know sometimes days away with with um, I'm in the ahead space of oh. and there's new things to feel and relate with and change. So what I imagined it to be wasn't what it turned out to be, mm -hmm. and so that I think you've really touched on something. You know, that when you, there's so much content out there, there's so much information, mm -hmm. videos and articles and analysis and just hours and hours and hours you can find yourself in this kind of rabbit hole yeah. of reading about disclosure and um, what's going on. And I can just feel the part 
that's leading that. Mm -hmm. You know, like there's, what is that balance? Because there's a curiosity there and there's a need to know. Mm -hmm. Then what's the yeah. balance in, around it, taking it in? It really is. Like you said, it's a part of us that's really attached. A part of us is feeling really bound by the system, really bound by the powers that be, mm -hmm. and feeling really excited that there is definite signs on the horizon that their power is coming to an end and we're at the precipice of a great change. So what we typically find, and some of the critics of this movement are saying, oh, they're just into hope porn. Oh. And... Um, that because sounds kind of harsh. It's, it's a harsh judgment. and But what they're, the critics are coming up with is a feeling of like, there's this always being on the edge of reading the tea leaves, reading the signs, reading the latest news. For, is it here? Is it here? Oh no, it's just about here. It's just about here. Oh, there's a sign. There's a sign. And they are big signs, but when you live on that razor edge of, mm -hmm. is it now? It, it can be really uh, the energy of, being on this edge, so something's really peaked, yeah. and it's, for some, I think for a lot, there's a real absence of breathing into their own internal reality. Right. Living, and, living on the outside. Right. And then the ups, the ups and downs of all of this, some of the, um, you know, thousands of indictments happening, mm -hmm. of different political figures, and um, there's... An energy of going to war, though. There's mm -hmm. this kind of good against evil, yeah. you know? Yeah. The alliance against the cabal, the reptilians against the alliance, the, mm -hmm. you know, Trump against the liberals. There's a mm -hmm. lot of against. Yeah. That's the energy that's hard for me. And the feeling. Personally, to yeah. digest is, is that frequency. The Right in line with that, the, for some reason, the icon of the cabal seems to be, from what I can gather, most people think that, you know, it's Hillary Clinton. When she gets put mm. in jail clothes right. and, and put in jail, that'll be the that'll be the turning point. And that really feels like an internal punisher kind of reality. If I'm gonna get totally jacked up and psyched, yay, Hillary Clinton's in jail and um, that's gonna be my personal salvation. It's like I, I, I think you're in for a surprise that um, we're going to find ourselves in jail along with Hillary Clinton if that's our outlook, because we've put a part of us kind of a witch hunt energy too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we really do want to feel evil, uh, restrained, and and a collective energy that comes to a big internal and external shift. Um, but this feeling, a feeling that it's going to be our salvation. Well, we don't even, I mean, we also don't even really feel there is evil, mm -hmm. right? Right. There is nothing purely evil or, or purely dark. There's energies mm -hmm. that are, are fear, polarized to fear or polarized to love, um, oriented to fear mm -hmm. or love. And so certainly what we call the Cabal or the Illuminati or the Archons or whatever picture you want to put on it, it's definitely fear-based. Mm -hmm. And yet in the, in the bigger piece of it, it's had, it's had its purpose and its reason for being. And if we, if we feel a forgiveness too, mm -hmm. a forgiving energy kind of goes, goes higher than all of this, mm -hmm. kind of looks and says, well, all of this is already forgiven anyway. So are we really going to mm -hmm. spend all of this energy to chase the bad guys down right. and to fight evil? You know, fighting evil, that feels like old paradigm to me. That feels like 3D, fighting evil. Mm -hmm. um, love doesn't fight. Mm -hmm. Love invites. Ooh, that would be a nice slogan. Yes. <laughs> so the, the invitation, well, let's, let's turn this inward. If you're very drawn to learning about, that's Coda scratching, by the way. <laughs> Coda's off camera. But he's off camera, but he's scratching. Um, hey, Coach. Uh, <laughs> when you got to scratch, you got to scratch. Yeah, he's got that. But if you, if you, um, it's like people are looking maybe outward 
to fight evil um, because there's something going on inside a feeling of fighting their own evil. Is that really true? Yeah. Feeling how you were saying how consciousness itself includes polarity and so there's love and fear um, are both contained within consciousness of love. Even the greatest of evil, I like to say, is is hopelessly contained in love. Yeah. So if consciousness is learning its way and exploring its way through duality, then the greatest of evils currently on our planet that we don't want to any longer be a part, and we don't need anymore, that's why we're collectively <coughs> releasing it from our consciousness. And it's just inevitable that it, it needs to go, it will go, it is going. But to think that it's that warrior spirit in you or I that's driving it from the land is such a different energy. Um, you feeling yourself and where internal self-punishment exists and coming to love that is making a reconciliation with self that moves out into the quantum and will do far more to shift the collective consciousness mm -hmm. and just making the, yeah. the pH balance in the, in the fish tank uninhabitable for certain frequencies to remain here because we are done with them and you are done with them. Um, Inviting them to a higher. Mm -hmm. yeah. So there's real excitement that can rumble right through our own hearts and lives and then seeing that mirrored in the collective uh, where certain actors that we no longer need and uh, they just aren't those that are setting the stage any longer for what we collectively are doing that's really different i wanted to ask you too because about a year ago you or a year and a half ago when we moved we were living on a remote ranch and then we moved here into town and suddenly we had internet access <laughs> that was like whoa we were online a lot and I got really into Ascension and Metatron and these kinds of things, mm -hmm. um, putting a lot of pieces together. And for you, it was really about disclosure mm -hmm. and the secret space program, particularly David Wilcock, Corey Good. Mm -hmm. um, you really just absorb that like a sponge, just for hours and hours. And um, there may be people watching this that are in that phase too. Mm -hmm. So um, we're honoring all phases here. That feels important to me that there's this phase of parts needing to learn about these things mm -hmm. too. What, what do you feel is going on for you during that phase? I specifically recall working with a deep part of me, a gatekeeper part of me, that I was, the big changes of coming from off-grid back into the city, there's enchantment and disenchantment and for a higher frequency part of me, it was a big disparity and as I felt this part, I felt I was able to uh, negotiate with him to go inhabit the mystery schools. It's just a third eye, creative visualization. I know you're not really happy here and you would help. Let's stay connected, but let's let you go and explore the mystery schools. And I had no... Um, deep clarity mentally about what mm -hmm. he would be involved in. But what opened out immediately in my life was the whole exploration of disclosure. And up until then, it, it I just hadn't been aware of it. Um, it was kind of stirred by the, a post by David Wilcock. And I had heard his name before, but that was just all I had heard. Mm -hmm. And then subscribing to Gaia TV at Gaia.com and getting a subscription there and taking in the host of alternative sciences and awareness of what's going on in our planet with other terrestrial beings and other suppressed sciences that are as credible as the day is long but are not known within our science today. Free energy, just a trajectories, different trajectories of information 
uh, yeah, I was um, given a few hours a day many times to take me in that information. But now it's come to a place of living it out in my present, mm -hmm. in a self-loving, integrated way. And preparing for a new world order yeah. by letting in a deeper new world order right here. Um, so. Do you think that's often what's going on? Is this, um, particularly these galactic aspects, or what we would call metasoul aspects, that are kind of not in star family? They're sort of knocking on our door, right? Mm -hmm. And they're wanting contact with us. It feels to me as if like you were guided to take all of that in. Mm -hmm. I also felt like it was a way that your 3D self could take it in. Right. Right. Um, so I want to say that too, is there may just be a 3D self, you know, these parts right. of you that need these other channels. And, and also, um, I don't need so much factual information, mm -hmm. you know, a whole, a whole bunch of data and connecting this to that. I'm more intuitive based. Mm -hmm. um, I always had such a rich imagination so it doesn't take much for me but I can see maybe it's maybe it's even more of a masculine thing yeah. that needs more proof I feel like David Wilcock is often coming from that place like let's mm -hmm. connect these dots here mm -hmm. let's show that this is real mm -hmm. let's prove it beyond a shadow of a doubt with credible with credible um, um, sources and studies and um, I I couldn't get personally I couldn't get the energy up too strongly to to research the the deeper uh, right research behind it but my heart could so feel the credibility of it but there was it's different how you related to that less and I related to that more definitely to the um, but yeah it is a three D self that wants to uh, I had to let my 3d self inhabit it to the degree yeah that he was satisfied and, and this felt like an unanchoring process for you too mm -hmm. like something was more anchored to 3d around star beings mm -hmm. which I, I believe that represents a huge aspect of people yeah. like a huge part of the collective really has no yeah. sense of these realities and how intertwined they've been and for how long they've been because of our media, because of our conditioning, 3D conditioning. And so it felt like there was this unanchoring going on with everything you took in, mm -hmm. you were letting go yeah. of 3D. Right. Even though you had so much let yeah. go, it was like another piece. Yeah. It really is the, <laughs> how big it is that we live in a conditioned world. So we're conditioned by the cosmology that we take for granted and to have something to challenge our all that we take for granted in our worldview to open us up to another potential worldview really does mm -hmm. just to have something so intense as fossil fuel be challenged to the point of proving it to the most skeptical part of you that water vapor works as an engine fuel to have that demonstrated to you it's just like it's like unbelievable but you can go and find the proof of it and you can satisfy the most skeptical part of you that exists so feeling that if that's true the unimaginable is true then what about parts of ourselves and how we relate to them and how they affect our psyche what about Metasoul brothers and sisters that are bleeding into our awareness uh, What if, what if part of that depression that you're facing isn't just your wounding from this life? But is in your Metasoul line and there is a Metasoul brother or sister that's wanting to make contact with you That emerges as a could it be no it couldn't be wait a minute This is and there's these bits and pieces of information that slowly Right. weight the scale to create a, a tipping point yes and I, I think what what I really wanted to communicate today was this um, like it's okay if parts of you need to spend the hours mm -hmm. watching and reading this stuff mm -hmm. maybe maybe what we're inviting is that you can feel what part of you it is mm -hmm. 
And um, I, I believe this also extends to ascension information as well. All of the energy updates, which even I myself contribute to. <laughs> Um, these videos are an example of what we're talking about as well, where sometimes you just need a flood of something or something to be watered externally. Um, but making, like you're saying, making the connection inside to how parts of you are reacting. I think sometimes, too, there's so much reaction going on to this information, and I think it gets bypassed. It's just on to the next video, on to the next article, on to... I feel sometimes with my own writing, I can feel the reaction of people that leave comments or to these videos. Um, and I so would want that person to stop. I want you to stop and pause and feel what the reactions are. Because it could be, like you said, it could be a metasol um, coming in. To get your attention, it could be a part of you, a punisher, that's like judging all of it and you're not in touch with that. Just be in your being while you're taking all this information in. That is feels key to me for digestion, emotional digestion. Otherwise, it just feels mostly like a mental, mm -hmm. like a information overload. As we always like to say, and yet it bears repeating, it's not the thing itself. It's your relationship to the thing. So mm -hmm. whether you're getting buried in 12 hours a day of disclosure information isn't the thing. It's how you're relating to it. Um, can you feel the part of, and this is where the relationship to the thing becomes really dynamic, is when you can feel the part of you that is so aching for change to come into the collective, let's say, around disclosure. Yes. Why does it matter to this part of this this part of you, um, and then to feel it as separate from just you, because you as a higher five D being doesn't have five D self doesn't have the same relationship, doesn't feel trapped here by what's very locally going on in the current mm -hmm. drama mm -hmm. of three D Earth related events. Um, it just doesn't. So part of you feels trapped, I would guess, would be one big option. Yes. And, but just to get in there with that part, to feel why it feels the way it does, why it feels a hope and a salvation in these epic changes that are about to come. Now, when the epic changes come, you will yes. have the true gold. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll have free technology in, I, I believe, very short free energy technology in the short order mm -hmm. but you know when we're no longer paying an electricity bill and we've got a free energy generator sitting outside our door we'll normalize that in about three months yeah and it'd be like oh, or a replicator that a replicator replicates anything we want <laughs> this sounds so cool and exciting mm -hmm. and but look at all the things we've normalized already, computer chips and the fax machine and air and travel. And we're still left with Just, the same emotional body, yeah. even with these technologies. All the advancements of this last hundred years. Yes. And so we've got many more to come. They're really going to be exciting. And yet we're going to kind of be like entitled kids in a candy store if we don't get to the deeper heart. And actually, one of the reasons I believe that some of this stuff hasn't come out yet isn't being released yet to us from star beings is because of our emotional immaturity mm -hmm. um, as a species because of our inability to digest things and make mm -hmm. things so polarized mm -hmm. um, they're waiting for us to mature mm -hmm. that's what it feels like. that's what I've been offered to mm -hmm. waiting for us to mature mm -hmm. so you can you can begin that maturation process for yourself in the way that we're describing so really, I hope what you're getting from this video series is that every moment is an opportunity to feel yourself and feel what's going on for parts of you because parts of you are reacting probably to everything. So if you're taking in a whole bunch of information like disclosure or ascension, there's a corresponding reaction going on inside. And what is it? What is that reaction? That's actually much more interesting yeah. to me, and maybe increasingly to you, than what the information is offering you, actually. It's what's going on in here. So. Wow. 
Like that's the, the word disclose means to lift the veil. So to lift the veil internally is to lift the veil with ourselves and to fall in love with ourselves, And so we can go from one dimension to another and feel at home with ourselves. Go, we are going to be very much more interdimensional. Um, and that's going to be magical. And it's not just the technology that will bring mm -hmm. us there. It's our opening to our heart and our souls that brings us there. It's the inner negotiation to process the fear mm -hmm. around that, around being that multidimensional. Mm -hmm. Thank you for thank you for coming. Thank you for and having me. Enlightening the conversation. Mm -hmm. This really is kind of an example of Raphael and I everyday conversations. Mm -hmm. Sometimes mm -hmm. hours. <laughs> it's been amazing to watch this series unfold, and I'm really glad to be on day 2-2 two -two of 33. Yeah. And, um, this will be, it is touching a lot of hearts and lives, and mm -hmm. I really enjoy watching each day. You do watch each day. And you uh, do. I have a wow factor. <laughs> <laughs> this intentionality and heart flow mm -hmm. um, really feels like it's going into hearts and lives, and I'm so glad that you're doing it. Well, I couldn't be without your support. Mm -hmm. I mean, lots of behind-the-scenes support, but just your love. Mm -hmm. And we had a, a wonderful group weekend this weekend, too, and it was, mm -hmm. it was just a lot of really good process and parts moving and energy moving. And Someone new here with us this yeah. week and uh, our um, community expanding. So. And you were a big part of that, yeah. you know, the co-leadership. Mm -hmm together. So we're kind of coming off of that energy of creating, seeing our conscious community coming together. Mm -hmm. So if you'd like to be part of that, mm -hmm. the doorway in is sessions. Mm -hmm. So you can read more about that on our website. And continue to take in these videos because they're a great way to get exposure and immersion. Mm -hmm. Thank you for joining us. Thank you.